Hey guys, it's your boy Eli from the Geek Centurions, and if you've been following some of our stories online, you know I've kind of started doing some experimentation, specifically like comic book recordings, <laughs> recordings, I'm sorry, comic book uh, recommendations. Uh, you know, it's a little about myself today. So, you know, I'm here recommending comics that I feel like you should be uh, looked into, you know, reading, you know, if, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of comics out there and people don't know which ones to read. So I'm here to give you guys sort of an idea of what to read. Some recommendations that I feel like these books are like good for you guys to check out. And they're going to be from like basically, basically from the big two, Marvel, DC. But you know, I'm try, I'll am trying i try to get some more indie comics in there from like Image, Boom Studios, and all that stuff. And maybe some manga in here. But uh, yeah, let's get started and let's figure out which ones we want to talk about. So um, for those of you who haven't seen the story time... You know, that's probably like a while back. One of the books that, first books I recommended was Daredevil, The Man Without Fear. So if you ever seen the Netflix series, the first season specifically, this is what the show is based off of. This is the the book that basically gave a new meaning to Daredevil's origins. It is written by Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. Drawn by John Romita Jr. And if you don't know who Frank Miller is, he's the guy who basically wrote a lot of movie, a lot of book, comic books that became movies like Sin City, 300. He's written a lot of Batman books. I'm not kidding. There's a lot of Batman books. Like Batman Year One, The Dark Knight Returns is like one of the big ones next to The Killing Joke. That's a different book that he didn't write. That was Alan Moore and we'll get to that book maybe one day. But no, he's also written some Daredevil ones and this is one of the most well-known Daredevil books that he's run, run, written. I'm oh, sorry. You know, uh, stuttering can happen sometimes. And this is actually one of my favorite comics that I've ever read and it's basically detailing the the origin in a new way in a new light compared to what you most people commonly know it's a more darker theme and introduces more of what you come to know that daredevil is is where everything sort of began for daredevil this sort of dark gritty underbelly is where really where it's been like solidified that kingpin's his enemy and this book goes into essentially what makes Matt Daredevil everything that has happened to him you know from his, losing his father to training with Stick and it's just a great read uh the art for John Romita Jr. is really good his people are like mixed bag for him but I really like it especially when it comes to his cross hatching so let me see if we can find that right page here and if you're uh it's also going up to the audio so you might not be able to look at it but I'm pretty sure if you just type in um John Romita Jr. Uh, Daredevil, you prefer to find like a lot of cool art. So here's a good one right here, and it's like it's a two-page spread that's kind of like ups, kind of needed to look down at it. And this is just like an amazing work of art. He's very scratchy. He's very um, very kind of very scratchy, but it's kind of his use of colors is really good. And that the colorist is by a different guy named um, Christy Schnee. I think I said that right. If you're ever watching, I'm apologize. I'm very bad with names sometimes. But no, he's got that sort of scratchy, like, like, like you can tell that this is like, may like this is supposed to be like taking like this is a dark, ver dark version, like a lot of shading in there. And it's such a good read. I really enjoy it. It's also the introduction of Elektra. So if you're seeing her in the second season, you know, she, Frank Miller is the one who made her. She became well known in one of the books that involves <laughs> he involves uh, her. Especially with the the hand, and this is very much you know a comic that that talks about the origin of Daredevil, and it's very detailed in, in a lot of ways. And if you get the trade paperback, which is the one I have right with me right now, it kind of shows you uh, Frank Miller's writing process, which is really good. And Frank Miller's a great writer. Well, his writing kind of got it's not as good as what it used to be, but his old stuff is really good. And one thing I really liked about this is that. It sort of captures what we've come to know of Daredevil as, and yeah, like it, it's, if you've loved Daredevil, the Netflix series, like I did, this is where, this is one of the things you should read. It's really good, it's really, you know, captures that sort of gritty, dark, underdog feeling of Daredevil, which is one of the things I really love about that character. Like no matter how much, how down in the dirt he is, he always comes up, back up. Which you can say that for a lot of superheroes, but his is especially because he has no powers. And yeah, and so another book that I talked about during the story the story on Instagram was, and this is along with 
Man Without Fear. This is what I feel one of my favorite comics ever. And that is All Star Superman. And this is the first issue. Sorry, the camera. I'm working with the camera here and I'm not used to it. And it's written by Grant Morrison, who is like a really crazy writer. He likes to come up with a lot of like for like meta, fourth wall breaking, fifth dimensional beings kind of stuff. He's a really crazy out there writer. But he's really cool. But he's really cool. And he loves like the old school golden age of comics and he tries to make that in this book. And this is drawn by Frank Quitley. And Frank Quitley is these two I feel like complement each other so well because they, they have captured the sort of essence of Superman that is really cool. So like this is the two page spread. I'm going with a lot of toothpaste right because it captures like a lot of what I feel like is the art. And you know, it's a, an amazing image of Superman flying into the sun. This is a story it's essentially, you know, talking about Superman. He's uh, after saving the day, uh, he's been exposed to like radiation that doesn't really gel well with him. And so he's kind of like basically dying. And before he dies, he wants to make sure that the world is safe, even without a Superman. So he's going around doing like. I, I compare it to like the Her the Hercules story of like his 12 labors, the 12 labors of Hercules. So like he's always doing, every issue is like doing something. It's kind of funny because it's 12 issues. <laughs> so he's always doing something about trying to say, the, you know, leaving the world a better place. And Lex Luthor, he's in this and he's like conniving. He's like, he's coming, he's up with something, man. Something you don't really know, but when he comes out like, oh, Lex, man, that is, that is genius. And this is, and... Grant Morrison really captures everything that I love about uh, Superman, which is like this sort of sense of hope. Um, sense of hope, you know, everything's gonna be okay. You won't just put your trust in Superman. He'll say he'll always be there to know the right thing to do, always be able to save the day. And yeah, it's just so much, you know, love for the character. And like I said, if Grant Morrison is a fan of the Golden Age of Comics, if you don't know what the Golden Age of Comics is, that's like way back during like war, like uh, 40s. I'm probably getting the, the the years wrong, but it's way back in the early days of comics, where it was a lot of like hopeful, um, fun, crazy stuff. Like Superman could just sneeze planets away out of the solar system, kind of stuff. Yeah, that actually happened. Just look it up. And it's kind of like that weird, fun stuff. And Grant Morrison captures that in this book, and it's so good. I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite books. And there's a lot of moments that I feel really captures what makes Superman Superman. So that I feel like the movies, the recent movies, not the Christopher Reeves, those are great. First two, I don't talk about the other ones. And they capture so much that I feel like the movie, these recent movies have now captured. That makes uh, me such a huge Superman fan. And for those of you guys who've never really liked Superman, I really recommend this book. It basically captures everything that makes him like one of the best superheroes ever. And why he's like the definitive superhero. Yeah, and so like those are the two books that I talked about. But I also got more books that I feel like you know, that should be checked out. And like I said, these are mostly Marvel and DC books, but come on guys, those are the big, those are, those are, those are, there's a reason why they're the big two. And yeah, so this next one is just to go along with like our Superman talk. Um, so, quick notion, a lot of people try to copy Superman. Like I'm talking, Marvel has done it, Image has done it, and like you can look at any sort of company that try to go into Super hero comics they always kind of take that Superman template and either just copy it or do something really weird with it and like Marvel has done like at least to my knowledge at least like three different kinds of Supermans aside from DC doing like multiple Earth versions of Superman kind of stuff so the three that I'm thinking about off top because we're talking about this is a Marvel book and so it only makes sense that I'm talking about Marvel's like attempt to make Superman. So the first one was uh, Hyperion, which is part of the Squadron Supreme. And he's he's basically like cardboard cutout Superman. He's a little, he's basically, he's, he's kind of like evil in some aspects, but he's kind of a good guy. Um, I wouldn't say anti here because it always depends on the writer. And most of the times I've seen the writer kind of write him as a bad guy. Yeah, because like I'm, so for example, I'm reading the and I'll talk about this soon, uh, probably in another video, where it's centered around the, the this is the current Avengers written by Jason Aaron, which has She-Hulk, the you know the Trin the Marvels Trinity, which is Thor, Iron Man, and Cap. Uh, Captain Marvel's in it, and <laughs> Captain Marvel's really great in this book. 
Robbie Ray's Ghostwriter, who I really want to talk about one day, because he's like one of my, he's one of the newest Ghostwriters, and he's one of my favorite Ghostwriters. Along with that, uh, Black Panther's in it. Uh, they just recently added Blade, which is like, what? Blade? Blade? Like, you will never see Blade in the Avengers, because he's so, like, out there, but Jason Aaron makes it worse. So I'm, like, really glad he did that. But I uh, know that's Hyperion is in that book. He's kind of like the bad guy with his little wannabe carbon copy of Justice League. <laughs> Again, I'll get to that one day. Uh, and then there's Blue Marvel, who's like a recent one. Uh, he's kind of like a African-American Superman who can just do anything in space. Like, he's he's he's, he's pretty cool. I haven't read much about him. I read him when he was in, like, a team-up run or kind of stuff like that. But he seems like a pretty cool character. I want, really want to check him out. But the character that I really enjoyed in reading, and the character that I'm about to talk about right now, is the Sentry. So, I'm going to be talking about the recent run that was came out, like, in, like, last year, in 2018. Oh, uh, man, this is showing its date. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, uh, no, so Sentry is, like, take Superman, add a bit of, like, schizophrenia slash multiple personality syndrome and that's just Superman that's a century and like this is one of the most interesting like aspects of Superman and I think like take take on the Superman idea because nowadays you always see like some sort of darker interpretation you know you have like the Injustice Superman you have um can't remember, remember the name of that one character but, and, you know, Invincible had one like two. It, check out Invincible, it's really good too. And uh, for all you uh, Amazon Prime watchers who have been watching The Boys, Homelander is a big example of that. Bright Burn was another one. Like, there's always these sort of like dark interpretations of Superman. This is probably one of the most interesting one where he's a good guy, but there's like some stuff about him that, you know, would, would be really interesting. So, quick intro to who Sentry is, because he's one of my favorite characters as well, is that, um, He's a superhero who has multiple personality syndrome, who got, like, Superman powers through soldier serum kind of stuff. Basically, like, add, add like, the origin of, like, Captain America, instead of, but instead of making him Captain America, you turn him to Superman. That's kind of, like, that crazy. And he, through some stuff that I'm not going to go into, because I really recommend you guys read the, the original Marvel Knights book that came out in, like, the 90s or 2000 uh, by Paul Jenkins and Jan Lee who was the artist who basically gives you the origins of the century but essentially he was this hero that was part of the Marvel Universe that everyone just sort of forgot because he had that ability because the more people remember him the more problems that caused the more people that, the more the more powerful he was the more problems that caused so he made everyone forget including himself so he's been living a normal life and, like, no one's been bothering him unless he has, like, unless something has causes him to come back to make sure that people remember him. And one of those things that made people, reason why he made people forget is because there was this character named The Void who, like, essentially causes a lot of problems and he's really close, connected to the Sentry. So The Void is, like, if you do um, all the good you do, I'm gonna do something equally as bad as stuff. And so, the only way Sentry was able to do it was this big thing, and it caused a lot of people to forget. And I'm not gonna go into more of it because I really recommend you guys to read it. I really wanted to talk about it. I'm like, no, you guys gotta read it. It's really great. Uh, Century by Paul Jenkins, Jay Lee. It's, it's really good. I really recommend it. It's one of my favorite books. Got me into reading the Century. The Century. And yeah, so he's been this character who. I mean, he was created like in, in like in the early, late '90s or 2000s, but the way they written him is they made him write, seem like he's always been part of the Marvel universe, and it's really interesting to see how um, all that relates. Like the Hulk was his best friend. Uh, he was really close to Mr. Fantastic Reed Richards. He inspired Spider-Man and all that cool stuff. But essentially, the book that I'm talking about is most, this is the most recent run, and that is this book right here, The Century. Uh, and this is written by uh, Jeff Lemire, and the artist is kind of Kim Jacinto and Joshua Cesar. So essentially in this book, Ro uh, the century whose real name is Robert Reynolds, 
is kind of trying to live a normal life. He's like a, a cook at a diner with his buddy, uh, Bob. And, no, hey, Bob is the other guy. I'm sorry. It's been a while since I read this book. I can't really... Um... Billy! His name was Billy! <laughs> it's right here in front of me. I'm so blind. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, Billy is a sidekick, and, you know, a lot of stuff happens. But essentially, you know, he's trying to live a normal life, but he can't keep that sort of... And this is where I mean he's he has multiple personality uh, situation because Robert Reynolds is the normal guy, the Sentry is the split personality, and that split personality wants out. He wants a, he he wants to do out there and do some stuff. So in the book, he they find a way for them to live in an equal sense. Like Robert Reynolds is doing his day job and all that stuff, but at night, um, and he's not going out there. He's, he's there's some so weird technology stuff involved, like Tony Stark and all that crazy stuff in which Sentry gets a little of his uh, fantasy which is saving the world without causing any more harm causing the boy to come out so that's sort of the from the first issue but as the story goes on stuff starts happening Schizophrenia comes in the object that he needs in order to make sure the Sentry is kept at bay and making also making sure that the boy is at bay is gone. It's disappeared. So now Robert Reynolds is freaking out. It's this whole time chase kind of thing, like you know, running against time to make sure like the like Sentry doesn't do what he has to do. The boy doesn't come in, and come out. And it's a really crazy read. And the art by Jesse John Kim Jacinto, and Joshua Cesar really captures that sort of like craziness of like the situation. And like you'll see other characters like the Avengers. Um, Hulk and all that stuff and you know this artist sort of really captures that sort of intensity like I'm trying to find a specific page like this is a page where like everything just goes to hell like holy crap everything just gets that well and I, I mean I love the art but there are moments where I'm gonna be honest like I love the art but there's moments where like eh, you know a reach out wouldn't have been so bad but so like here's like this crazy image that tells you how crazy it's getting, like, Sentry, Robert Reynolds, and some other thing in there is, like, causing some kind of real crazy thing happening, merging and stuff, and it's so detailed, and it's so crazy, and it's so fun. It's, it's, gr it's great art, but then there are moments in the art where I'm like, yeah, that, that could have been drawn a lot better, and I'm trying to find a good example of that. Because it's usually the faces. The faces are feel so weird. So like, here, here's a picture of Tony Stark. And like, if you are you're watching this on YouTube, yeah, just, you know, you always say if you're audio listeners, uh, check out. This is the fourth issue. If you want a good example of it, then you know that's like. <sighs> Tony Stark looks so weird. He looks kind of like. Um, there's um, Rob, <laughs> there's an actor who looks. He's looking like that's not. It's not Robert Downey Jr. It's someone else. But no, The Century is a really great book. It's a really awesome book. I really recommend it. It's a five-issue miniseries, so you'll be done with it in, like, a day or two. And it's so much fun. And, yeah. So, you know, that was a that was a DC... That was a Marvel book, so I think it's only time for us to talk about a DC book. So, the next DC... This is the DC book I have. It's kind of like another Superman thing, but it's also a Batman thing. So, um, in recent years, Batman... And Superman, you know, they have kids. Batman has Damian Wayne, uh, with a relationship with Talia Al Ghul, daughter of Rachel Al Ghul. And if you don't know who those are, just basically watch the first Batman Begins and Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. The Liam Neeson's character and that one chick that was kind of there that died, who was partnered with Bane, that's Talia Al Ghul. Imagine they had a kid. And essentially, Think of all that smartness that uh, the shadows um, have with like Batman's, well, like, more like the characters of those characters, but it looks like Batman's uh, coolness. And Superman and Lois Lane have a son named John McCant. He is the new Superboy, and he is so much fun. <laughs> I really love that character. And the one thing in this book that I'm talking about is the adventures of the Super Sons. So in this book, this is the second run of a uh, of uh, another Super Sons run, and this is, this book is just as good as the first one. I still recommend you guys read the first one. They're both written by uh, 
Tomasi, uh, <laughs> by uh, Tomasi, who was Peter J. Tomasi, and it's a uh, rent drawn by Carlos Barberi. And yeah, it's so it's very detailed art. It's very actiony. You know, when I was uh, I was surprised at how much action packed this book was. But one of the things I really recommend for people to check out about this book is sort of the relationship between uh, Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne. It's really like um, the best way I can probably put it is like that one kid who um, he's he's like the good kid who like you know oh uh, sure thing uh, school teach he's an apple and Damon's like that stuck up kid who like always gets A's and like always gets into trouble and like it's like that weird like um conversation like Jonathan's like the simple kid uh Damien's like this overly smart kid and like they somehow work together like there's a moment in, like in the book where like they're both at school John it's last day summer vacation and John and school bell rings and it's John's like yeah school's over kind of stuff and like Damien's having a talk with his professor with his teacher saying yeah I just gave you a hundred twenty page uh that 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 homework that uh that you told me to do that's like five pages yeah I turned 120 pages good luck with that and that's how Damien is. It's in like it's the dynamic is so much fun, and and Damien like you know Jonathan's out there running, and I found the page really. It's like Jonathan's out there running, having fun. That's that's Jonathan over there. He's out there having fun, and Damien is like just having like a nonchalant talk about uh, his paper to his to his teacher saying. You know, I'm pretty sure I got an A already. I'm just like, gonna give you this. And it, it's it's written. It, they say it in the book. It's like a college page, college uh, paper. And I'm like, dude, you don't gotta do that. <laughs> and then, there's a lot of stuff like that in this book. It's like this sort of fun interaction. Be it they still have these like fun adventures where they go out, be like, you know, bad guys and learn things. And yeah, honestly, it's the real dynamic between these two characters is so much fun. And the art, again, it's so good. It's very action-packed. And, yeah. Yeah, it's so, so, so good. Like, look at, like, this is one page where Jonathan catches the car. The way that those are angled and all that stuff. Everything's so cool. It's really a very fun read. And I think that's what you need to do with the, with the story. Like, just make it just fun. And, you know, it's, it's centered around... This story centered around, like, you know, Jonathan and Damien having some vacation. But, you know, <laughs> being kids of superheroes, you know, that's never really the case. So essentially, they had to go into this intergalactic battle. <laughs> Somehow, they got into themselves into an intergalactic battle with, like, the kid doom. Like, um, like, the kids in Justice League kind of stuff. Like, um, it's, it's really funny. For whatever reason, somehow in this iteration, everyone has a kid. Like, Joker has a kid, Lex Luthor has a kid, Deadshot has a kid, I'm like, what? So it's kind of like a, it's such a real that later on, it's some reality warping kind of stuff, alternate stuff, alternate universe hopping kind of stuff. But it's a really fun read, and I really recommend it, because it's, it, it, it captures, if you ever liked Superman and Batman and whenever they team up, which is something I really want to see more out there, which we are, thank God. And this sort of that, that, that like, you know, you get dads hanging out. Now you get the kids doing stuff, and it's a lot more fun. It's like, you know, it's a, more, not as serious as, say, when Superman and Batman get together. But it's so much more entertaining. And Super fun, it's, the Adventure of the Super Sons, it's really fun. Um, I haven't finished most of the issues. It's kind of been in my back catalog. But whenever I get to it, you know, I know I'm going to have a fun time. Because I'm I like, I have the first four issues, and I'm enjoying it. It's a 12-issue miniseries. It's already kind of over, but I'm, I'm going to to get on it. You know, I am already know I'm going to have fun. Everyone's been talking and telling me, like, dude, you got to get on this book. It's so much fun. It's so cool. And I'm like, ah, don't tell me no more, but it's so good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I got a couple more comics, but, um, no, actually, I just got one. Yeah. This is going to be, like, mostly a 30-minute uh, episode, but, you know, um, I don't mind talking more. If I have more comics to talk about, I have got a lot more. I got a good collection over there. But, uh, you know... <laughs> so, and I really would like to talk more about this, but you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get to it. So the next book is a. Uh, so this series just recently finished, like a couple weeks ago. 
at the time of this recording a couple of weeks ago. And I think this is one of the best examples of like, if you have a hard time getting into comics, I think this is one of the best examples for you to read, sort of give you a notion of how things are. So one of the things that people have a hard time reading, getting into comics is like the whole continuity thing. Uh, you know, do I have to read all this kind of stuff in order to get what's going on? And do I need to get into like this whole, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm probably hearing some stuff in the background. It's because I have no noise counselor. I'm doing this at home now. It's a uh, it's experimental. But uh, no, uh, yeah. So this, so, you know, one thing about comics is that, you know, it's, you have a character that's like Spider-Man has been going on for like, since the 60s, 70s, and yet he's like, oh, yet all the way here, you know, yet all the way till now, he's still kind of like out, well, he's not longer a high schooler, but he's like out of college, he's got a job and stuff, you know, he's got a relationship with Mary Jane, but he's never really shown like progress in age, which I feel like that's a... Uh, it's always weird because like you you read an old issue of say Spider Man, or Superman or whatever, you see them using like the technology at the time, and then all of a sudden like you either relate one like oh I'm still like 27 years old and I jumped from like a flip phone to a iPod or iPhone or whatever, and yeah I'm still 27 like that, those 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 are decades in between and you you know progress because I, I was a kid when like I was like a teenager or some whatever. I don't remember how old it went. That was a, I feel like that was a long time ago, flip phones. But no, that's my example. So, you know, they never really progress in age. So, until recently. Um, this is like a mini-series. It's in its own world. It's own little thing going on. And this is written by Chips of Dart. And this book is called Spider-Man Life Story. And essentially, this book is, a sen is taking that character of Spider-Man and progressing him throughout the ages, throughout the decades. So one book would be sent around the 60s, then the next book would be the 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way to current, all the way to 2000, the 2010s kind of stuff. And you see him progressively age and like how, you know, he's grown. And they kind of redo like famous storylines throughout the decades in like their own little weird way. And the writer for this one is Chip Zdarsky with art by Mark Bagley. And it's... Chip Zdarsky has been killing it recently at the time of this recording with Spider-Man stories. He's done the Spectacular Spider-Man, um, and he's done this, and I think he's right now, right now he's also writing Daredevil, and I really need to get on that Daredevil. I've been telling me I've been like asleep for that one. But no, this book essentially, you know, it takes Spider-Man and just ages him up. He goes through all these like important events, you see him grow up, and him go through some major changes. And like, so the first book essentially, this one right here that I have, is in the 60s. And you see like the helicopters on the cover. So that kind of, again to the audio listeners, uh, the cover is essentially like Spider-Man swinging on a helicopter. Because around the 60s it was Vietnam. And there's this whole issue with Vietnam. And you see how, and you kind of get the reflection of what happened in that time. Real world and all this stuff into like current, into like what's going on around Spider-Man's life. You know, in this book. Uh, good old Flash Thompson is like going off to war, army man, and you know, you get that sort of, you know, at the time, like, there's this whole disc, like, you know, we shouldn't go to Vietnam, we should go to Vietnam, you get that, and it sort of like tells you, like, big important stuff that happened around that time, that decade, and also giving you, like, this sort of emotional story about Spider Man, because essentially, because you never see that in comics anymore, of where a character would just progress in age. They always kind of stagnate, you know. Spider-Man, he's no longer a high schooler, he's an adult. But you never see him, like, grow old, have kids kind of stuff. Oh, there's a reason for that, but I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but, um, this book essentially captures what I've always liked about, um, Sp one of the things I liked about Spider-Man, which is, like, you know, he's always got, got this sort of headstrong thing and always willing to do something for the greater good. And, you know, time progresses. People naturally die like there's a point where Aunt May just naturally goes away she kicks the bucket <laughs> bites the big burrito if you say and you know Peter Parker reacts to that you never you, to this day I don't know how Aunt May is still alive but she's still alive somehow I don't know why that woman is if we went into like normal if this if the current comics current mainline story of, of like Marvel 
went around like the same way as this book, it, <laughs> that woman would be uh, nearly old, 200 years old. Probably even more. I'm probably underestimating that woman's age. But no, it's it's a really great story. It captures sort of like this sort of timey thing that made Sunrise Man so great and see him progress through the ages that we'll probably never see in the co in like modern day in the modern timeline of uh, the Marvel in the Marvel books is really refreshing and sort of giving you a new light of the character. And the art is sort of captures that sort of greatness of the period and it keeps going. So like you know this is a Peter Parker with like his Aunt May having like little dinner and stuff. And it captures that sort of look and it's interesting to see progression of that of this character, you know so, for example, like, Miles eventually shows up, but, you know, Miles was recently created, like, in the mid-2000s. And, you know, when we eventually get to the mid-2000s, Peter's, in, like, an old, like, an old man, he's, like, has kids, they're all, like, they're all teenagers. And then Miles comes up, out of, comes out, and he's, like, there. And it's, like, so... It's, it's really interesting to see K Peter Parker... And everyone around him just naturally age. And sort of this really weird, like, spin on, like, these classic stories that sort of help progress, help, like, go through the ages. So, like, they do a clone saga thing. And a lot of people really don't like clone saga. I, I never really got into it either. You know, clone saga was where, like, um, Peter Parker was cloned repeatedly. And you, you had this whole, uh, he's Spider-Man. No, no, he's Spider-Man. I don't know who Spider-Man is kind of stuff going on. I mean, you know, this book captures, like, that whole, um, I, you know, it, it redoes that story in a way that makes sense, in a way that, you know, it will work on in the years later, because, like, you know, editorial will always come in, you know, rewrite stuff, break on stuff, and here, Chip Zdarsky has a chance to, like, in integrate those stories into something, like, that would flow in, like, if this was a natural time position. And it's a really great read, um, there's a reason why every time it came out, I wouldn't run to my comic book shop and just go and pick it up because it was such a fun read and uh, yeah I, I don't know what else I can say just like go out and read Spider-Man Life Story um, if the trade comes out I recommend it because it's such a fun book and the covers are amazing too um, I have I know I have the rest of them somewhere in this room ah oh, here we are <laughs> so like I have like almost uh, when they came out I got them and I was like, you know, this is going to be a fun read. And I was right. It was a fun read. And I'm just missing one. I'm, uh, here it is. In each cover, um, this is for the YouTubers. And also, I'm going to basically explain it to the audio listeners. Because it's one of my favorite books right now. Is, um, you know, the covers. You know, the first one, this in the Spider-Man After Life, uh, Life Story. And it's called In the 60s. Because it's going to say in the 60s. It's like Spider-Man hanging out from a helicopter for Vietnam. Then there's the 70s where, like... Spider-Man holding on to like a disco globe and <laughs> like that's the shape of the Halloween thing. Uh, let me just take it off the cover real quick. Yeah, you know this is recording. <laughs> like where he just uh, takes it off. Like, you know, it's Spider-Man, but he's like dangling a big crystal ball. Like the discos because the 70s. But it's like the disco is shaped as uh, the pumpkin from the Green Goblin that he always throws at people. And then there's uh, the 80s, which is like the whole Cold War. And Spider-Man, like, in his black costume. Because around this time, Secret Wars is going on. This is the origin of the black costume, which would, you know, be the Venom suit. is in a casket, because it's essentially in relation to uh, Kraven's Last Hunt, which is a very well-received uh, book. One of the most famous Spider-Man books, uh, which I also recommend to read out there. Uh, I don't have it on me, but I'm really that I've read it, but it's really good. Yeah, the 80s, and then you have the 90s, and, like, the 90s, like... Honestly, I don't know where... Uh, I can relate to this place like Spider-Man climbing up a uh, building with like a crack a window. Um, yeah, I have no way to relate that to the actual thing that happened. And then there's the... In the 2000s. And of course we all know what happened in the early 2000s. Uh, yeah, 9-11. So this one's really interesting because essentially it's Spider-Man trapped inside like the American flag. Well, it's supposed to be the American flag. Let's just get the one side, but you know, that's there's there's clear imagery of like down a lot, like twin towers kind of stuff in there. You have two red two very noticeable red stripes on the cover, which are like pretty obviously we don't know what that is. 
Which is weird, because I think this book, this book talks about it a bit, but never, but, you know, talks about one of the big things that happened around 2000 involving Spider-Man, which is the Civil War storyline where um, he revealed himself to the entire world. So, yeah. And then there's the last one, which is really good, too. And uh, for the, for you audio listeners, it's just mostly like, um, it's a black cover with Spider-Man's outfit, like, kind of just laying there. It's kind of... Like, no one's in there, just the costume on the floor. Um, there's a reason for that, and you, when you get to it, you, it all makes sense. But this is a really fun read. All the books I would recommend, I wouldn't recommend a book if I didn't find it enjoyable. Like, if I were to recommend a book that I didn't enjoy, I don't know why would I recommend it. It's really stupid. But I, I want, I'd rather recommend books that I've read that I really enjoyed. That I feel like, you know, you should check this book out. It's so amazing. It's so good. Or it's like, you know, check out this book. It's really good. It's, it's, it's. You know, it couldn't be, it's not the greatest, but it's like, it's a fun read. Because I feel like that's what a lot of people kind of need when it comes to comics. Know which one they want to read and like, just sort of be in chain. There's a lot of people who uh, feel differently and what they find as entertainment. So I'm just giving people the, what I feel is entertaining. And uh, you might disagree with me, that's fine. I'm cool with that. Just don't be an asshole about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, I think that's all I got today. But you know, these books are a lot of fun, and I wanna... I originally did this as a story for... I was thinking about just doing this as a story for him, so... But uh, someone recommended me, like, it'd probably be better if I just did it as a video. And there, I just got the idea to just do it as an audio. And then just part of, like, the geek concerns in, sen in general. And it's in, a little bit in the short side, but it's... I really... This is really fun for me, and this is what I've always wanted to do with the end of the geek centurions. And nothing wrong, the Tops of Kelvin are awesome. And, yeah. I'm kind of mumbling at this point. <laughs> but no, um... That's all I... Ha that's what I got for this week. This is gonna, I'm going to try to make this a weekly thing. I'm going to try. I re I'm really going to try. Because I really have a lot of books on me. I might have them on me right now. But I have a lot of books I feel like I'll have to just check out. So, yeah. And, you know, I guess this is the end of it. So... <laughs> as I usually always say, you can always check us out on, so, you know, this has been my comics recommendation of this week of September 20th of 2019. Uh, that's today's date, by the way, so it's probably, like, I'm really bad at this. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get better, don't worry. But, uh, yeah, those are comics recommendations for today, for this week. And you can check us out, and this is Eli, part of the Geek Centurions, where you can check us out on Castbox, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and hopefully Pandora. I'm so waiting on that. Maybe if you can't find us. I'm sorry, but you know we have the other places, iTunes, Castbox, and all that good stuff. But yeah, until then, this has been Eli from the Geek Centurions. Signing out.